Good afternoon and welcome to episode eight of Hospo Happy Hour, brought to you by Hospo for Life and Warner's Distillery. I hope you all had a great day yesterday and are looking forward to another big show of mental health topics today. In today's episode, we will be discussing maintaining a healthy body and a healthy mind during social isolation with Jessica Defendi from the Altius Group for the first round, followed by Tim Collette from Specialised Events for Last Drinks. Let's get today's episode underway. Up for the first round today, we have Jessica Defendi from People Sense by Artius Group. Welcome, Jessica. How are you today? Well, thanks. How are you going, Liam? Brilliant. So tell us, how can we maintain a healthy body and uh, a healthy mind during social isolation? I've been saying this wrong all day. Isolation. <laughs> it's... um. Yeah, a really, really good question and a fantastic topic. Of course, it's something that is absolutely relevant to us all in this day and age at the moment and the strange times we find ourselves in. Mm. Um, but, you know, with, res with respect um, to you know, the hospitality industry, I really do believe that it's been an industry that's been hit with, you know, more significant change than probably most other industries um, who have transitioned instead, you know, to digital mediums or other forms of working. Um, so, you know, maintaining, I guess, a healthy body and a healthy mind during this time, um, especially important for those um, in the hospital industry who have undergone a lot of change and disruption to their routine, to their normal habits, to their day-to-day -day living. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, this, um, this topic is something that um, is not only important right now, um, but is, is, is a topic that can also be important and relevant to us moving forward as things continue to progress and change, or as we get closer to hopefully some form of normality. Yeah, certainly can. I'm gonna bring up our, our first set of slides and that to uh, go through. So we've got here um, social, social, uh, social isolation. Um, tell us about, about what we've got here. Yeah, so I guess um, first and foremostly, it's important to acknowledge, I think that we are very social uh, creatures, we're social beings. We are built and designed, in fact, um, to connect and to connect socially, to be around people, to work with people, etc. Um, so I do understand that um, people have different preferences and maybe more introvert, um, or more extrovert, uh, more inclined to one way or another. But at the end of the day, um, we are social creatures. So when it comes to social isolation, uh, it doesn't fit well with us, I guess, um, is a short way to put it. It doesn't go well with our nature and how we function or how we have been made to function, I guess, in society. Mm -hmm. So it does um, result in quite a bit of a hit, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I've just listed there, I guess, for people to have a look at and reflect on just some, so very, very few, um, of the predominantly, I guess, social impacts um, and, and society, uh, psychological impacts that social isolation is having at the moment on us. Um, so loss of freedom, it's of course impacting um, our working arrangements, like I mentioned before, especially within the hospitality industry. Yeah. That has a long effect to our income. It, it leads to financial stress not to mention boredom, anxiety, and surely, and just the frustration as well. We don't also uh, do well with uh, managing, I guess, factors that are out of our control. We don't like being out of control. We like being in control, especially of our own lives and just our day-to-day -day functioning. Yeah. So I guess in addition to those factors, um, you know, I haven't even listed there just yet, but even for us to just kind of reflect on and discuss um, the physical impacts as well, um, we're seeing increased alcohol use. Um, we are also noticing, um, not just in our clinical work, but other researchers as well in their research and in their clinical work, um, are seeing impacts on uh, individuals, you know, um, losing um, maybe, you know, the, the strength that they had gained physically or the flexibility they had gained. Um, people are starting to maybe forget or, or neglect somewhat their usual just routine health checks yeah. um, or just their health maintenance in terms of their physical health. Mm. Um, so not to mention as well, um, you know, uh, feeling kind of sluggish and sedentary, um, exercise and routines being thrown off, sleep um, and diet um, being thrown off, off balance as well somewhat. So... As you can see, this has quite far-reaching effects and, and quite a big uh, ripple effect, unfortunately. Yeah, no, it certainly does. But I think there's a lot to be 
a lot to be proud of for everyone out there for, you know, being thrown into this and, you know, dealing with it. And that a lot have dealt with it very well. Um, and that during, during this time. And that's been um, Certainly. great to see. Yeah. yeah, and I guess just on that on that point, in fact, um, as we still you know stay on this slide just for a moment longer, uh, th this is not all bad news. Um, while um, while it has been tough, and even adjusting to this sudden bizarre change, and again the ripple effects this has had has been difficult um, and challenging for us all. At the same time, we are seeing, and we really do have to give credit to uh, the fair you know, a fair bit of positivity that has come out from this as well. Um, so, for example, um, people practicing a lot of gratitude um, and being really aware and mindful of what they're grateful for in their lives, yeah. and reconnecting with their values. These are all important factors um, in terms of maintaining and building psychological resiliency. Um, people are spending more quality time with their family than they've maybe never ever spent <laughs> before. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot of um, you know, a lot of a lot of good stuff basically coming out from this experience as well. People connecting with others who they may haven't you know, maybe hadn't spoken to in a very long time. Not to mention trying new skills, new hobbies, getting interested in new healthy habits as well, and kind of taking this as an opportunity to hit the reset button. But I think the key to this is really maintaining balance because I have noticed a lot of talk and a lot of um, information on either one extreme to another. And I think it can get pretty confusing for people to know, do I just fully let go and let it all kind of slip and just focus on the bare minimum to get through this? Or do I go to the other extreme and go haywire and reach, you know, reboot everything in my life? I think something somewhat in the middle is probably most healthy and more sustainable. So not feeling pressured to have to um, fully take advantage of this opportunity, understanding you're dealing with a pandemic with a lot of change, with a lot of disruption and a lot of stress, yeah. but at the same time, I'm making a proactive, I guess, choice to make some good healthy decisions so that we ride through it nicely. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, um, there we go. So we've got some tips here um, on things that we can do and that during uh, social isolation. Yeah, absolutely. So just starting off with the psychological, I guess, which is, um, I, yeah. you, I guess, a little bit more in, in my domain. Um, I know that a fair bit of information has probably been heard already by people, but I'll try and give it a little bit of a different spin and maybe even just as a gentle reminder for a few points too. Yeah. Staying connected, of course, is fundamentally important. And that comes back to the first point I raised today, which is that we're built to connect. People connect in different ways. So for some people, that's going to be joining some really um, interesting um, and, of course, safe kind of online chat forums on topics and hobbies and areas of interest that people have in common with others around the world. Yeah. For others, staying connected might be through the form of, of gaming um, to some, you know, with others. Um, others might be Zoom meetings, catching up online, FaceTime, telephone calls, or even as restrictions start to kind of lift somewhat, it might be appropriate, depending on what state you're in and where you live, to, you know, stay connected in terms of catching up with a mate for a walk outside um, or something like that. So it can come in so many different shapes and forms, but fundamentally, it's something that we need to do. And I think if we reflect for a moment, you might not be the most social butterfly perhaps but if you think about it just going into work especially in hospitality you're bumping into so many people you are you are connecting um whether you notice it or not and so to have that stripped away automatically and all, all of a sudden um is a huge change so even just being in public spaces again and being even around um the the public and other people can feel a hell of a lot better than um than staying completely isolated by ourselves definitely can in terms of um, routine, I guess, uh, look, that is a, a fundamental one as well. That's simple in terms of um, making sure that, you know, keep that alarm set. Um, it doesn't <laughs> please me to have to say it. I'm not a huge fan, but <laughs> my, it, it makes a difference. You know, keeping that alarm set, getting up, showering, getting dressed. Um, even if you just do those few steps, make your bed. Um, you're already setting yourself up for success. Like you've got the ball rolling. It's the hardest part that's done and the rest of the day can kind of progress nicely. 
planning your day as well um, goes a long way. So you don't have to pack it full of things, but having some idea of what you've got, or, you know, what you can do or what you've got going on um, and breaking it up with some social time, some, um, some time doing other tasks or other necessities um, makes for a pretty good routine and scaffolding. Definitely. Um, again, normal day life previously, pre-COVID, um, would have had a routine without us, again, maybe knowing it. Um, but you've got a routine when your shift's been set, when your working hours are set, that's a routine. Yeah. You know, you, you factor your life around it. And so we're trying to recreate something similar, I guess, so it's not too much of a different change. Yeah. Um, you know, um, we are noticing tensions um, between family, um, between partners, between friends and housemates, um, some tensions and conflicts that can be arising when people are packed in together and unable to get that space and time to themselves. Yeah. So communication is really key when it comes to things like that. Of speaking openly, being assertive, um, being clear, setting up some appropriate boundaries about how we're going to make this all work for the benefit of us all moving forward. Mm. I guess when it comes to other things that I've mentioned there, um, getting onto the to-do list, um, getting onto other things that you've always just been curious to try. I mean, now's the time, I guess. So even if it's some bizarre hobby or interest, um, I really encourage you to give it a crack and give it a go. Um, in terms of social media use, as well as, as, as I've listed there, um, being careful and mindful that um, what, you, what you soak up and what you take in will remain there and tends to remain there. It has an impact on us. It really does. So being careful in terms of, you know, looking and reading only reputable sources when you're taking in information about this pandemic, um, also limiting, you know, you, being, being flooded by too much information um, and maybe trying to limit your social media use in general as well, because it doesn't always tend to be helpful. Use it as a tool. You know, there's a lot of helpful ways that we can use social media as well. We can be inspired by what other people are cooking or making or creative hobbies that they're doing. Great. If you're finding yourself mindlessly scrolling for hours, not so great. Probably a little bit of a warning sign there that maybe it's time to log off for a moment. Oh, and I, I, I've said it before over one of our other sessions, like, when, when everything came in, it was the amount, amount I spent on that phone, just, just reading the news and that, and, and the news started to get to me because like I looking for something, which, you know, we ain't going to see, um, and that like, no one's going to give us an instant miracle overnight. Um, and that, and I just had to turn off from it all and go, well, I'm not going to bother reading it anymore. And I haven't since, um, and I've stayed completely away from it and just done my own thing. And it's, you kind of go well once we're once everything's ready to go back to normal we'll just go back to normal um and that or you know to a capacity so yeah it's it's certainly important on your mental health in that regard certainly and it's so easy to get into that kind of trap it really is you know it's there it's so um so so easy to pick up that phone it's so accessible um and and it goes from one intention to another so initially you know it's to maybe keep informed fair enough to keep in the loop but then before you know it like you said that mindless kind of scrolling or, or returning back to it constantly it does tend to have um more of an unhelpful impact than a helpful impact and i guess well like you know really great point and really well said liam in terms of looking for something that we're not going to get um that can be so disheartening when we're putting ourselves in that position constantly to go oh and feel like disappointed i guess or <laughs> that's to chip away at our sense of hope um, which takes me to my next point, because um, maintaining an optimistic explanatory style is basically about maintaining hope. So maintaining some element of understanding and reminding ourselves it's not over. It's not over yet. It's temporary. It is changing. It is moving. We are not completely gridlocked and stuck. Yeah. Um, and that's really good news for us. So that that encourages us to shift our energy elsewhere. It encourages us to not throw in the towel and say it's all over, what's the point? It encourages us to say, what's next? What else can I try? What else can I get involved in instead? Which is, of course, much better for our, our psychological and our physical help, yep. uh, health rather. So I guess um, um, another point that I just popped in there as well um, as, as a bit of a side point for people to think about is um, to maybe reflect on the past and think about other times where they may have been isolated somewhat. Um, from their peer group or from their workplace 
it could be from anything. I mean, an example that comes to my mind in my personal life is um, having had uh, undergone a knee reconstruction and having been, you know, physically taken away for quite a long time and undergoing rehabilitation. Like that was basically a form of social isolation. I couldn't really get around or do a lot. I mean, um, other people might have their own experiences that are somewhat similar. If you found things that worked for you then, they might just work for you somewhat now. So you might not have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and you might be able to draw upon some of your past experiences and use them in a really helpful way at the moment. Yeah. So just a side thought there. Um, but in essence, and all in all, um, maintaining that optimism, having fun, getting creative as well, um, is a part of it and practicing gratitude as well is a really big tip when it comes to maintaining our psychological health as well during really challenging times. I mean, there's fantastic research to show that even writing down three things that we feel grateful about just every day. I mean, it could be anything from really good coffee through to grateful for a really funny conversation with a friend that day. Writing those down every day can have a, quite a positive impact in terms of our mental health. So now might be a good time to action those those simple little tasks, I guess. Yeah. No, it's um, it's one of those things, and 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 even you know finding you know new new things to do or things that you you'd wanted to do. I know, I know, but like YouTube is, is a great tool to, you know, learn something new. Um, and there's lots of different, different tutors, which are, which are there, like pick up a guitar and play some music and that, like, you might not be able to play a guitar, but you can learn how to play a guitar um, and that and do things for yourself, which you've always wanted to do. Certainly. And that really gives us back that sense of reward. Um, you know, it's like a nice bit of a challenge. It gives us a sense of reward, of achievement, of satisfaction, all things that we would have been getting, you know, also from our work and from other places before. So let's try to get little doses of it elsewhere right now, yeah. rather than completely going hungry without it, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. So I guess um, in terms of our physical health, um, then and in terms of the physical side of things uh, again a few points that people may have seen before but maybe we can speak to these points a little bit further keeping active it's being said here and there and everywhere but my goodness it just it has to be said again because it's so fundamental and it's a two-way street um, in that keeping active in, impacts our mood and has a positive impact on our mood it is protective it protects us from um, developing and protects us against anxiety and against depression and against stress compounding. So it really is a really helpful antidote. It's a helpful thing to integrate. And again, I'll just be mindful of this extremism that kind of seems to be going on between don't do absolutely anything. Um, the gym is shut. You walk, you know, you're running, you, uh, track is closed. Let, let it all go right through to the other extreme of, let's shed all the kilos and become, you know, some super weight champion. <laughs> I would suggest some way probably again in the middle or to be quite gentle again and balance those two components in that there's a lot going on. We've spoken about the psychological impacts and kind of how hard this stuff is. Um, but at the same time, we're also speaking about how to regain control, how to keep up um, with things that are helpful for us. So some movement is better than no movement getting creative in terms of how you go about that, go for it, download. There are a lot of free apps at the moment. There are a lot of freebies going around. So it's a perfect time to try any of them, to try anything that you've kind of been curious about that you've been wanting to try, or maybe before haven't been in a financial position to try, right. give it a crack. Maybe, and then maybe this is a great starting point when we re return to work and when we're in a better financial position, it might be something that you want to continue on. Absolutely. So something that, um, again, a huge benefit to our psychological health and then that benefit in terms of our mood feeds back as well and, and tends to help motivate us and help us um, maintain these really good physical health habits too. So one swings between the other. Yeah. Routine, um, again, um, same with our physical health as well. If you're structuring your day in a clever way that works for you, um, then you're going to start to see a positive impact because routine has a big impact in terms of our sleep habits and in terms of our diet and exercise. So for example, a good starting point with routine can be with our sleep, looking at our sleep time and our wake times. Are they, you know, are they kind of appropriate? Are we going to sleep at a decent hour or are we going to sleep 
extremely late and then sleeping in into extremely late and then saying that we've used up most of the day and what's the point of getting started and then we <laughs> kind of loop around we're all human beings we're we're all have... wheel. you get on the mouse wheel and that's it totally and we're all in the same boat in that regard and it doesn't work well for any of us um so you're trying to get off that mouse wheel like you said um setting that alarm avoiding too much napping maybe during the day and wasting away the hours if anything try and pull through to the end of the day conk out at a reasonable hour wake up early and try get onto um, a good routine kind of like when you try and beat jet lag and you try and, and structure things again yeah and also in that regard um just again mindful of of this industry that you know and the context around this um hospitality you know we we tend to for many um not for all but for many we're talking about really late nights um after dinner service um and we're talking about maybe even sleeping in or for others waking up very early to get the day started in cafes who might that might be open early yeah. so the context has changed if that's not what you're doing at the moment that you might need to shift your sleep cycle somewhat to accommodate to what you're doing now so it works better for you now does that make sense i guess yeah, absolutely mm. no, it certainly does i didn't get much sleep uh not last night the night before and you feel it you, you honestly feel it i didn't i wasn't myself yesterday um and that and then last night i had a great sleep and today i feel much better yeah, it, it has a, it does have a big impact and it has a big impact in terms of um, you know, if we don't feel great, if we're feeling sluggish and tired or our mood is dropped as well, which can be very closely associated with sleep, it kind of makes it harder as well to, to, to do that exercise routine, to make that healthy meal, um, to even speak with our mates as well and our friends. So again, that flow and effect, but routine is helpful and it is important to set in terms of our sleep and our diet and exercise and structure it into your day. If you're a bit of a morning person, great, use that. If you're you know, more inclined towards the evening, get some exercise in later in the afternoon, not too late, so you don't get too excited before you go to sleep. Um, but try and factor it in in a way that kind of works with you as well. Yeah. I guess when we talk about um, making these healthy habits um, or trying to set these healthy habits or trying to maintain these healthy habits in terms of our physical and our psychological health, we are um, quite reliant on our motivation, I guess. Mm. And I get that at this point in time, that can be quite challenging because all this change as well kind of can knock our motivation, can knock our flow. Yeah. Um, and I guess what I'm encouraging is for people to really tap into their intrinsic motivation. So it's not extrinsic in terms of external in that my boss will be really angry if I come into work three hours late. Um, or I won't get paid if I don't turn up. That's kind of extrinsic base. Intrinsic is that kind of motivation where we go, I really want it for myself. It's really important to me. Mm -hmm. And so trying to tap into that, even, I mean, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of writing things down and I think it's really, I, I see the benefits in terms of my clinical clients as well. But even if you get out a pen and paper and go, what do I want to change? Why do I want to change it? Why is that important to me? How am I going to go about changing it? Yeah. So you, therefore you're tapping into yourself as being the real driver and you're doing it off your own accord because you want it, not because you're being told necessarily by someone else. So, yeah. you know, a good part of that is keeping in mind what you value. And if you value your health, if you value your well-being, let's tap into that and go, well, let me do, let me act in a way and, and embrace behaviors that are, aligned with that um let me get on that road then a little bit better yeah definitely in terms of i guess um keeping creative and shaking things up a little bit so trying things that are new new recipes um new exercise routines and regimes um new means of getting moving and getting out there if you um you know a way of maybe addressing two components is um, something I mentioned before, very simple, but if you're used to Zooming with your friend and if you have the opportunity to, based on the restrictions in place in the state that you live, if you've got the opportunity to catch up with them for a walk, then great, you're doing your exercise and you're catching up, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're getting some, you know, of course, that fresh air and some space outside. So there can be other ways as well. I'm aware of a lot of people who are really enjoying exercising with their friends, doing yoga classes, and even whether that's virtual or face-to-face um, -face and outside. Um, so there are a lot of means that we can kind of use these new tools to our advantage and really get a lot out of it. But um, at the end of the day as well, um, regardless of all these new initiatives, there are some things, 
some old things, I guess, that we really should be continuing with and would recommend to, to keep going, which is our regular hygiene and our regular health care as well. So we might be really good at um, washing our hands a thousand times and sanitizing our hands and being really aware of touching our face and whatnot, um, which is great and important. But at the same time, just our standard hygiene in terms of showers, brushing teeth, maintaining our physical health in that regard. Yeah. Um, those things are actually really easy to slip away for quite a few people when they don't have the routine or structure um, or motivator in terms of work or leaving the house and things like that. So I really strongly recommend look after the machine, look after the model. Um, it's a special model that you only get one of in terms of your physical body. So try and maintain it. Um, a lot of people look after their cars, probably their computers um, a lot better than they might look after their physical body. So let's put some attention, let's put some attention back on this important little thing. Um, and regular healthcare as well. So um, GPs are available, of course, by telehealth services. So if you don't feel comfortable or don't have the opportunity or cannot go in face to face or it's simply not allowed, not a problem, but keep up with your consults. I'm even aware of physiotherapists who are running online consultations as well. Yeah. So if you've got injuries um, or aches or sprains or if you have underlying conditions like diabetes and um, or cholesterol or heart conditions and you're meant to be kind of keeping up with some regular routine health checks yeah. and consults, please, please keep them up. They're crucial, of course. It's great there's still services available. I went to see my chiropractor yesterday and that, but it's just all a bit different. You're walking through the front and walk out through the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And 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 there's a, there are quite a few services that um, are in fact available, yep, still face-to-face. -face, and they've just put in a lot of different parameters in place, which is great to guarantee the safety of their staff and, and of you as a client. Yeah. Um, so I guess there is, you know, again, I really recommend that those things don't slip, um, don't slip behind too far because they are still paramount. They're still there. They don't go away in the meantime. Yeah. Um, so they do still need our attention, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So thank, I have to, I have to say that, that that's, that's some great, great, great information. Um, and that on definitely how we can look after ourselves you know, a bit better. Um, and that may be a few of us um, which haven't been uh, looking after ourselves, you know, the way that we should. And that's, mm. uh, that's some great advice. Great. So, uh, yeah, thanks for um, joining us for the first round this morning, Jessica. Um, that's all we have time for. And uh, Jessica will be back to uh, join us for your shout. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks. So we're back for another segment of Your Shout, where you at home can send us your questions for one of our professionals to answer. You can contact us at info at hospoforlife.com.au or you can send us a direct message via social media. Our first question uh, today, we've got one for today's episode, um, comes from a viewer from your state, uh, Jessica from Perth. Um, I used to feel satisfied with the activities I filled my free time with. Now that I'm unemployed, I'm finding my hobbies are unfulfilling. What can I do to motivate myself to find new hobbies that don't put myself or others at risk? Mm, that's a great question. Um, it really is uh, because motivation um, is a, a, a tricky topic, I guess, um, for most human beings in general, to be honest, let alone when we had to deal and cope with um, which, yeah, with so much change and disruption and stress lately. Mm. Um, I guess a good starting point I think would be, and I'd, I'd recommend would be to kind of go back to the drawing board um, and look at what, what you're wanting out of your hobby um, and out of that extra and out of those other interests, what you're wanting and what you're needing out of them. Because the reality is, is that for this individual, the context has changed. Um, previously they were working. Um, that may have meant, and if you're working in hospitality, that's going to mean um, you're probably you know, uh, interacting with a lot of people, you're in a fast paced environment, perhaps um, you're surrounded by um, maybe your colleagues are those uh, who are some of your nearest and dearest, perhaps, and almost like your, your close friends and family, you're pulling long shifts, you're on your feet a lot, etc. Um, and, you know, it's also an exciting and quite exhilarating environment too. So maybe, you know, if previously the hobbies in, in your free time were things that were quite 
soothing that kind of calmed you or gave you a bit more alone time that might look quite different for example now you might be needing less of that and more of the other stuff that you maybe almost got out of your working environment so understanding that the context has changed and maybe what you're needing craving and wanting has changed as well maybe so i'd recommend looking there at the start as a starting point and then getting researching um, in terms of what exactly are you wanting to satisfy and what shape or form can it come in um, because it can come in something that is cognitively stimulating in terms of our thought process. It can be something that's emotionally quite soothing. It can be something that's activating, that's physical, and that gets us going. Um, and really looking at what you're wanting to get out of it. You know, are you wanting to come out the other end, ideally with a skill that you've learnt? Um, you know, do you want to create something that is long lasting? Do you want to, um, is your hobby and interest going to be something that gives back to you or gives back to others in other ways as well? So also looking somewhat and having a bit of a foggy idea of what kind of endpoint um, and outcome am I searching for? Because that's a way of, I guess, really tapping into that motivation space too. Another part of it though, is also understanding um, it's going to take time and a, it's going to take a really good solid crack. So please don't get down um, or discouraged. If you find it um, tricky to get the cogs moving and get this in action, that's totally normal and understandable. Um, stay in there, hold it, um, keep moving forward and try to give it a really, really, really solid good go, um, at least for a few weeks. Um, to see how it sits with you and how you're finding it before maybe you make any sort of adjustments and changes because starting off anything new is challenging, even if it's something fantastic. Um, so just understanding that that's all part of that process as well. Um, another part of it could be involving some friends um, who might have similar interests once you've figured out and um, identified what you're wanting and some cool ideas that you may have found through some research online. Put it out there to your mates. Maybe there are other people who are interested in doing it as well. Um, and maybe that's something that's extra motivating too, is that you're doing it together. Um, you're all participating in your own different ways. So that could be something helpful too. No, that's, that's a good advice, uh, Jess. Um, that's your shout for today. And uh, send us your questions to info at hospoforlife.com.au. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Jessica. Pleasure, Liam. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Up for last drinks today, we have special guest Tim Collette, the Managing Director of Specialised Events in Victoria and the man behind Food Service Australia's show and the Franchising Expo. Tim, welcome to the show today, mate. Thanks, Liam. Really appreciate the invite. Cheers. So it's been a crazy time. Tell us how COVID's affected your uh, schedule of events this year. I'm sure it's taken a lot of uh, planning to put it all, put it all together each year. <laughs> now... <laughs> Well, it's a business of planning and um, it, it, like everyone else, you know, everyone has been hit by this thing. The hospitality industry, the travel industry, um, the event industry, um, you know, I don't think um, anyone has missed, missed the bullet on this one. We've all been impacted. Um, we are one of the industries where it, it was stopped dead in its tracks. Um, the early March, we were... Um, we all knew about the virus, we knew what was happening in China, we knew that it was starting to, to move into Europe. And uh, we did a, uh, I, I took our exhibition manager for the food show, Liz. We went to um, Brisbane and met with all the food equipment companies. We went to Perth and Adelaide, met with all the food service suppliers there. And the message was that, um, hey, we're going ahead. The show's gonna run in May. Um, we're gonna have extra hand washing facilities and uh, and uh, it was full steam ahead that people still want to get together. Um, my flight back on the Thursday Thursday uh, morning, I, um, I was coming back to Melbourne where I live and it started getting a whole lot worse. And there was talk of the Grand Prix not going ahead that weekend. Um, we, um, I changed my flight, I went to Sydney, I met with Darling Harbour and we started talking about new dates for the food service show. It, yeah. um, it was only a few days later when the governments started talking about lockdown and, and bang, um, you couldn't run events. So our industry was stopped. It, it like, like, like a restaurant or a cafe, there was no control, there's no choice. We, we had to stop running the shows. And then it was a mad scramble about what do we do? Mm. And uh, we, we didn't, want to cancel the event, you know, the event is important every year. It, it, it brings people together and it's, 
it's the core of a whole range of other events that run around it and it's, it's marketing plans uh, of suppliers. It's where uh, the industry gets new ideas and meets with yeah. each other. So it was a postponement. When do you postpone to? Because there was no time frame on this thing. Yeah. So we were meeting regularly, talking to as many people as we could. There was no precedent. And uh, we decided that uh, we would postpone the show to November. Mm. And then we did what everyone else did. We started thinking, when do we work from home? How do we work from home? Yeah. How do we share our databases? How do we talk? How do we meet? Um, it, it, it's such a strange time. Uh, there's been so many things that are unprecedented. I think like um, many other businesses, you know, you, you saw years of work being undone. We, we run these events. We, we're working on food service 2025 at the moment in terms of yeah. these and events. And, and they get bigger and better every year. <laughs> Thanks, Liam. We've always, it's always been great to see you at the show um, and all the things you do. Uh, the shows are great. I love the shows. I think, I think we all love the shows. It's great to get together and um, it's, it's such a shock. Um, the food show is in May. We've now moved it to November. It will run uh, and I think it'll be a great success. Um, but when we cancelled or postponed... Um, when we postponed that show, we actually had a franchising show that was only one week away. On that Thursday, we were telling people we were going ahead. On the Friday, we said, no, we're not. Mm. Um, that was a hell of a shock. Yeah. Um, these shows cost millions of dollars to run. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there would have been a lot of franchisees, franchise, franchises that uh, would have suffered as well. Of course. I mean, I, I hate talking about how we suffered because retail and hospitality have been smashed and um, really when we run these events we're not running them for ourselves we're running them for hundreds and hundreds of exhibitors and and the industries that we operate in yeah. and the visitors that come along for new ideas it's, it's hundreds of people that are affected and we we are representing their interests and it's 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 been tough franchising um, has been a, an industry that's had a lot of challenges in the last two or three years yeah um, this, this, was, this was one of the biggest. Um, but, you know, to, to be ringing exhibitors with one week to go and say, hey, the show's not going ahead, um, it, it was extraordinary. And I think also, like everyone else, you open your insurance policy and <laughs> right, okay, we're, we're up for a couple of million dollars here. It wasn't covered. Yeah. Insurance, like, like most businesses, excludes pandemics. Uh, it was a hell of a shock. It was, it, it's been a big impact. Um, you know, we're working around it. We delayed, postponed that show till November. Some of our smaller shows we have canceled. Yeah. You know, our franchising shows in, in, um, in Brisbane and, and Perth, we've, we've decided they're not, we can't go ahead with those. Yeah. They will run next year. Um, but the food show, the show that was one week out, the franchising show and the big food show, they, they need to run. They will both run in November yeah. in Sydney. And uh, we're working hard to make sure that they are a big success. Do you think we'll still have um, the same exhibitors come back in November or do you think it would have severely impacted quite a few which won't be able to appear? That's a huge question. That's a huge question. When we postponed the food show, um, we've, got, we've got a team of five that work year round on that event. Um, we, we had um, them call all the exhibitors. Yeah. Um, at that time, um, which was early, sort of early March, there was great relief that we weren't going ahead with the show. People were worried about it. Um, some still felt we should go ahead. The vast majority were greatly relieved. They'd on November that's seven months away. We'll be, you know, we should be okay by then. Yeah. Um, I think over the last month, there's probably been some businesses that, um, uh, uh, well, there's a lot of businesses that are struggling and, and some don't know that they'll be around in November. Yeah. Um, we've, we've talked about this concept of hibernation, which has worked to some extent. We're all in this. We've all sort of tried to cut our costs and yeah. the government has given us some really great assistance. I think business has been able to lock down costs to match income to some extent. Um, really... I don't think people know. I, I think people, a lot of exhibitors, our exhibitors, a lot of suppliers are dealing with the present. Yeah. Because there's no time frame, I, I think 
only a few have started thinking about how do we come out of this thing. Um, we, we haven't, um, we didn't cancel the show, we postponed the show. So our expectation is that all the exhibitors will, um, all the events will run the, the Chef of the Year competition, which you know well, uh, that will be running in November. We have already 150 entries. They'll all roll over to that new, that, those new dates, the 8th, uh, 9th and 10th of November. The National Restaurant Conference, the Aged Care Catering Conference, they will all roll over. Our idea is to pick up the May show, run it in November, yeah. run it with all the original features, all the original... Um, but, yeah, look, some, some will be struggling. Um, November is the great time for a trade show, not in normal times. It's, it's a sort of an unusual time, but these are not normal times. Yeah. Um, it, it's timed well for the recovery, for the bounce back, the inevitable bounce back. But we will work with exhibitors, we will work with suppliers, mm. um, work with the industry associations, because we know it's not easy. We, we, are, we, are, with, we are with the industry. We understand the challenges. Um, we'll spend the next six months doing new and additional activities online to promote exhibitors, to bring people together as much as we can. Um, we're working now on um, what we do on the original dates of the show and we're working on some video presentations and some activities and some Zoom meetings we can do on the original dates. Yeah, good idea. Um, we will start getting people thinking about November. We're starting to do that now, yeah. Liam. For the last six weeks, we've kind of left people alone. It's inevitable at a Zoom conference. You always have a dog bark halfway through, don't you? Might have been good for It shows that we're really here. Um, we, um, we're now starting... <laughs> we're now starting to, um, to talk about the show and what's going to happen in November. Yeah. And um, and that's been a little bit of a change just this week. I think as we're seeing these green shoots, as we're starting to come out of some of the <laughs> lockdown, yeah. um, we are now really starting to talk about November. We're actually going to print um, ticket, visitor tickets yeah. this week, 100,000 tickets. So we're, we're fully committed to November. I hope most, <laughs> most of the suppliers and exhibitors will get through, but... Um, some will, some, will, some will find it hard and we'll work, we'll work with them wherever, wherever we can. Yeah. No, that's, that's brilliant. How have, um, how have you been, been looking after yourself during social isola isolation? And that has uh, well, your mental thanks, health coped? <laughs> thanks for asking. Um, it's, it's, it's been a really interesting time. Um, I think like most, we've gone through a cycle. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster. There were times there where... You know, I almost felt overwhelmed by what was happening. You spend years building up a business and you see it, you see it kind of crumbling in front of you. And, I, I, you know, you worry about staff. We've got, we've got nine staff yeah. and you worry about your exhibitors. You, you worry about where you're going. Um, I think over this time, though, it's, it's, there's been good that's come out of this. I think everybody just slowing down and, and appreciating the simple things, yeah. um, the garden, the books, <laughs> the going for walks, the, the walking, the, the damn dog. Um, yeah. They're the things you preach. Spending time with the family. We, we've been playing uh, board games, Mex Mexican <laughs> games, and we've been doing jigsaws of all things. Um, I've appreciated those times. Um, we are still, <laughs> still working. Yeah. And... Uh, I meet with the team every morning at 9am, which has been great, on, on Zoom and um, try to keep a schedule. Yeah. I think keeping a schedule with work has been good. I try and put a shirt on and, and work, through, work hard through the morning. Yeah. Uh, no, not all of us are lucky enough to still have a job, but uh, if you do, I think, uh, or if you're working from home, it's good to keep a schedule. I keep a schedule with my social groups, my tennis group. Um, after this meeting, we're, we're catching up for our cocktail party. We catch up every Wednesday. I look forward to Wednesdays because yeah. um, I know it, uh, this morning we had the, um, we caught up with restaurant and catering in Australian Pork. They've been running really good um, Zoom meetings about industry updates. 
Yeah, and the on Tuesday night, I've got my tennis group where we just have a beer on these on Zoom and we, we talk the normal rubbish that we talk at, at tennis. Um, so I think if you can schedule things in on different days, yeah. keep them structured your week. On the weekend, I don't work, I, I relax. Yeah. Um, there, there's some of the things I've done. I've, the garden's looking pretty neat. The, <laughs> the, the, um, the jobs have caught up around the house. Cleaning out the uh, pantry is, was very satisfying. <laughs> um, if it wasn't for the, the, the huge financial impact, I, I actually think I quite would have enjoyed the, the last <laughs> six weeks. Um, yeah, I, I have to the, say I've enjoyed. I've, I've actually enjoyed it. As you said, like the first the first couple of weeks, it was like what the hell for me, especially it was like what the hell was going on. I just couldn't understand what was happening, why it was happening so quickly. I was completely yep. overwhelmed and just in utter shock that I was like, what do I do now? What do we do next? Um, now yep. we've got hospital happy hour and that, but it, you've just had to really just look forward and, and that and just go, well, it's just going to have to wait now. Now we can look after ourselves and, um, and do something for ourselves for once. And that's, it's been great. I think that that's a real message too. And, and control what you can control. And if you can fix something or do something, then do it. But if you can't, you know, don't worry about it. We, we didn't cause this virus and our competitors didn't, our customers didn't. It's such a unique experience where we're all, we're all um, impacted by it. There's no one really that we can blame in our own circle. So um, it's really brought out the best in a lot of people and, and caring for each other and caring and sharing and even the government um, working together um, states and federal and liberal and labor, they're, they're all working together. It really is quite a unique time. And I, I, th I think there is good to come out of that. Mm. Um, you know, accepting for many people too, the, the, the loss of income is, is, is hard to, to manage. It's, it's, it's really challenging. Um, but if you can't control it, you can't control it. You've, you've got to manage the things you can control. Um, keep looking to the future. I, um, I think we've all had this period because the information was so difficult, good information. This is where I really loved, uh, I think restaurant and catering have done a great job. Yeah, they have. Australian pork, people like yourself, Liam, getting real information out there has been really important. Yeah. Um, and, and knowing that we are going to come out of this uh, is, is important. Yeah, it definitely is. And it's been, it's good to be able to, you know, send a, a positive message out to, um, to people in the industry and that and you know there is hope for you know everyone out there i guess you know everyone's been lucky with the support that the government has given and that mm. means if they didn't i'll tell you what it'd be a, a totally different scenario so yeah it's been great yeah. what they have done for for businesses to you know whether it's rent relief or things thing, things associated with that so it's been really really good no well i'd like, like to thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day and coming on the show today, Tim. Oh, look, it's been an absolute pleasure, Liam. Um, encourage everyone you know, looking ahead, planning ahead. Uh, we have this show in November, Food Service Australia. It's going to run 8, 9, 10 of November in Sydney. Uh, it's going to be the show about getting back to business. Yeah. Uh, for chefs, it's going to be a great opportunity to catch up with each other, to get some new ideas, uh, to talk about uh, how to get back to work? How to how to how to bounce back? And 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 all the developments and the latest news. We are going to be running the chef of the year. We will be changing the rules on that. That um, for chefs who are not currently working will still be allowed to enter. Yeah. Um, we are going to be running a a one day seminar just for chefs, um, which will be geared towards. Um, individual and a career success for a chef. It, it yeah. won't be a business session, it'll be about the individual chef and uh, mental health will be part of that. And I hope you're, you'll, you'll be joining us for that. Um, that'll be really important. It won't, I said we'll try and run the show as we would, but there will be an angle of course about getting back to work and the things that we need to do. And um, I would like chefs to really use that as an opportunity to come and, um, and share their ideas and learn some new ideas. It's, yeah. it, um, it will be obviously free to register to visit. Um, all these activities we're doing for chefs are either free or, or really, really low price. We want to get 
as many as working chefs and chefs who are looking to get back into the workforce mm. to come along to that event. That's brilliant. Um, Foodserviceaustralia.com.au is the website. If you need any more information, um, we, would, uh, we would love to see you there. We'd love to talk to everyone before then as well. That would be fantastic. No, greatly appreciated. And yeah, everyone in the industry appreciates what you do as well. It's, it's one of those things when, you know, we all sort of heard food service wasn't going ahead. It was like, oh, and that's a, it's a great time mm. for everyone sort of far and wide to get together and, you know, not only catch up, but socialise as well. And that so it brings a lot of a lot of us in the industry together. So I think we'll all look forward to November and, um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day and much appreciated for coming on the show, Tim. Thanks, Liam. Cheers, mm. mate. Bye. That's all we have time for on today's show. You can catch us back here at 5 p.m. tomorrow for another great topic and joined by special guest, Glenn Cotter, who is an RUAK brand ambassador. Big thank you to our partners, Warner's Gin and Outius Group for supporting the show. Stay strong and stay united in spirit to create a positive change for a healthier industry. I'm Chef Liam Crawley. Stay safe and catch you all tomorrow.